Metal Slug is not for the faint of heart. This is especially true if you play the series in the arcades where each of your three lives counts. When you have no life bar and getting hit once means instant death, things can become quite stressful. But nothing will put your nerves to the test like the bosses of these games. These monstrous war machines are designed to stop your progression and empty your wallet. With so many installments, Metal Slug had a lot of nightmarish bosses that are forever stuck in our memories. Now remember, this is a subjective list based mostly on my own experience. These are the bosses that I had a hard time fighting them. You may have a different opinion, and I'm sure there are those who could defeat these monsters blindfolded while holding the controller with their feet. Also, I'm including bosses from the main games only. With that out of the way, here's the top 10 hardest bosses in Metal Slug. Alan O'Neill is a recurrent sub-boss in the Metal Slug series. He is a relentless officer in the Rebel Army who no matter how you kill him in one game, always comes back for the next. In some games, he is presented as a fully fledged boss though, and one of these times is his presence in Metal Slug 4. The second boss of the fourth installment puts you against an armed tower operated by many soldiers under the command of O'Neill. The tower is composed of five sections and you'll have to destroy them one by one before you could deal with the board officer at its top. The difficulty of this boss resides in the fact that each section has its own weapons and patterns to memorize. And just when you start to learn how to avoid its attacks, the section is destroyed and the next one comes down forcing you to change your position and strategy. You also have to deal with two sections at a time and depending on what you have destroyed, some combinations of these levels can really mess you up. At the top of the tower, you'll find O'Neill in charge of a giant cannon and parachute bombs. While the bombs are not very difficult to avoid, the heavy shells launched by the cannon are very fast and will most likely get you if you are not careful. With the destruction of the last section, O'Neill dies again. But later in the game, you'll learn that he wasn't even the real one. The level 4 in Metal Slug 5 takes place for the most part underwater, so it's not really a surprise that the boss of that level is a submarine, right? Wrong, it's a sand marine and you fight it in the middle of a desert. Admittedly, the sand marine doesn't have a lot of attacks. Its main weapon is the multiple cannon on its top that launches a volley of fireballs that fall on the player. Since the boss sinks and emerges from the sand constantly, the player will find themselves on top of it most of the time, mostly due to the fact that the sand marine's size takes most of the screen. That makes dodging the fireballs trickier since you won't have enough time to react to their trajectory. Should you choose to get off of the boss, you will have very little room to move and most likely corner yourself. In addition, the sand marine will use its front cannon and rockets to shoot you. But thanks to the sliding feature present in Metal Slug 5, you can manage to dodge the boss's attacks effectively, though in my case, I was more lucky than skilled to be honest. Next entry is also a fourth boss, this time from Metal Slug 7 slash double X. A monstrous machine will ambush you once you arrive at the end of the level, starting a long climbing up the waterfall, hence its name, Fall Mecha. With the bridge destroyed and no other platform to use, you can only take advantage of the boss itself and stand on. Since it's always below you, you have no choice but to jump and shoot downward. The mecha attacks by throwing plasma projectiles which are not very difficult to evade and every so often it shoots a huge laser beam that can only be avoided by jumping on one of the boss's limbs. Two prisoners are waiting for you on the said limbs and provide much needed weapons. However, the most aggravating part of this fight are the super annoying turrets hiding in the fall. They will come out from their hideouts more often than you like and ruin your time by shooting different kinds of projectiles. There is a way to tell what kind of attack they'll use, but even then, it's still very difficult to not get hit when you have so little room to move. Once it sustains enough damage, the fall mecha will launch a final laser beam shot that instead of killing you, will send you right to the next level. Let's stay with Metal Slug XX and with another encounter with good old Alan O'Neill, the real one this time. 
after they've been saved by their future counterpart. The rebel army found themselves in possession of some neat weaponry using cutting-edge technology. One of these fearsome weapons was a mech designed specifically for O'Neill, the rebel giant. The main strength of this boss is its high speed and agility despite its size. The rebel giant has many tools at its disposal. It can launch multiple homing missiles and floating mines that can easily overwhelm the player. The most dangerous attack in my opinion is its fast rockets that the mech throws from its left limb, whereas the right limb has the shape of a claw and used to deal devastating close range damage. Occasionally, O'Neill jumps off screen and charges at the player with full speed, the only thing that can stop him is a well-timed cannon blast. What makes this fight difficult is the fact that the player is forced to use a giant mecha themselves with no possibility to leave it. And since this is the first time in the series where we're using such tool, it can take some time before getting used to it. But god this fight is epic. This one is peculiar, it's not connected to the rebel army, the Mars people, or to any main villains of the series, but still manages to be the most hated bosses in Metal Slug. Soul Die Rocker, let's just call it Soul, it's shorter, is the level 4 boss in Metal Slug 3. It's a deity charged to protect the ruins where the regular and rebel armies fought. And because of all the destruction they caused, Soul got angry and started attacking anybody on sight. But in truth, you won't see it attacking anybody besides you. Soul looks like a giant face with a red orb on its forehead, which is also its only weak point. It continually floats above you and attacks using different tools. It has two types of energy beams, the yellow ones and red ones. Contrarily to all video games cliches, it's the yellow beams that you should be afraid of. Their patterns is random and you will most likely get cornered and hit by them. The boss can also create what looks like spirits shaped like wards that explode upon impact. Although they are not difficult to avoid, since they don't attack immediately and keep flying for a while first, I tend to forget about them and get hit anyway. Finally, it can shoot a purple beam from its mouth which you can avoid by running to the edge of the tower. The thing that I hate the most about this boss is how you can't use your grenades against it. Its weak point is so high up, they'll never reach it. So the strategy of taking advantage of the temporary invincibility after dying to shower a boss with grenades won't work here. Also, the more damage it takes, the faster Soul's attacks get. Just perfect. Brain Robot is the third boss of Metal Slug 6, and just as the name implies, it's a giant robot controlled by a brain with eyes stuck on it. These abominations start chasing you when you get deep into the sewers. If you get too close, the robot uses its claws to hit you. Staying far is not safe either. The robot will occasionally throw vehicles at you and shoot homing electricity projectiles from its brain. Its torso can open to send a wave of electricity balls that are pretty hard to dodge. Taking advantage of the sewer water, your enemy will create a wave of electricity that can only be avoided by standing on one of the cranes present during the fight. Once it takes too much damage, Brain Robot goes berserk. It violently swings its arms, giving you lesser room to move while continually shooting electricity balls. You do have a vehicle during this boss fight, the Proto Gunner. However, it won't offer you any protection, and unlike with the giant hermit in Metal Slug 3, it doesn't move in reverse, which means you'll have to constantly readjust your aim while staying far from the boss, adding more stuff to worry about when fighting the super frustrating boss. The first place is reserved for Metal Slug 4's main antagonist, Amadeus. The mad scientist used his genius to invent a computer that, in addition of taking control over all military systems in the world, was on itself a monstrous war machine. The fight is divided into three phases where Amadeus operates one of the three parts that constitute the computer. The first obstacle is fairly easy. The machine launches rockets that are not hard to avoid and attacks using its claws if you stay too close to him. The most challenging part during this phase is the circle-like lasers that he throws at you. They can be tricky to avoid. Once destroyed, Amadeus switches to the next part of the machine, which is also not that difficult to deal with. I would say it's even fun learning the patterns of its attacks. But all fun ends with the third and last phase. 
You know it's a final boss when you have to deal with BS attacks like those screen filling lasers and the purple ring that I still can't figure out how to dodge it. Those ones are cool though, I enjoyed learning how to avoid them. It's worth mentioning that the fight ends with Amadeus's fate remaining uncertain. Seeing him in a future game with a new crazy invention is still a possibility. The third place is reserved for Metal Slug 3's main antagonist, the handsome leader of the Mars people with a cute angelic laugh. Root Mars. The final mission of Metal Slug 3 is almost as long as the entirety of MS1. As a result, you get to fight three mini bosses before the last showdown. One of them puts you against the mother brain of the Mars people, and although that fight is pretty tough as well, especially when you have to evade those gigantic energy balls, it's the final duel against Root Mars that we are going to focus on for this entry. When you get ejected from the spaceship after triggering its self-destruct mechanism, you'll find yourself in a long free fall inside the metal slug. However, the mastermind of the Martians catches you in a last attempt to take you down with it. Since your vehicle is within the boss's grasp, it's obvious that you have no way of moving with it. Not that you can move in the first place, you are falling from space after all. But the Metal Slug still plays a major role in this fight, with its firepower and the invincibility frames it allows you when you leave it. Should you lose the slug, as it was the case with me, the fight will be a lot tougher. Root Mars has two attacks, a wave created by its brain that you can jump over but the timing is not very obvious, and the second attack is in the form of a pack of green orbs that Root Mars spits with its mouth and hits you from below. Needless to say, you have very little room to move, you are fighting on the top of the boss's head. Your partner will come to help you eventually, but I find him more distracting than helpful since his laser shots have the same color as Rutmar's green orbs, and his aiming sucks. The second place is reserved for Metal Slug 2's main antagonist. Are you starting to see a pattern here? The gigantic mothership of the Mars people, Rugname. After defeating the smaller spaceship Daimanji, the big boss makes its appearance and fuses with it. Rugname has only two means of attack, a large laser beam shot from the center which is pretty easy to avoid and the deployment of the many UFOs which is by far the most annoying thing to deal with in this battle. Their attacks and movements are completely random, the trajectory of their lasers is unpredictable and you will get cornered. Rebel soldiers will come to assist you, but you shouldn't rely too much on their help. They will, however, bring you a metal slug to use, which can be super helpful, if you manage to keep it long enough, that is. I remember the first time I saw this boss in the arcades. One skilled guy was playing the game and managed to make it all the way to this point with one life only. He thought he had beaten the game when he took down the Daimanji, but oh boy he was wrong. His skill didn't help much when he start losing all his remaining lives and quarters against the real final boss. The other guys who were watching lent him their own quarters and even then he couldn't beat this cursed spaceship. God bless the power of the infinite continues of the console version. Before getting to the number one spot, here's some honorable mentions.
and the number one place is reserved for the original Metal Slug's final boss. Just kidding. Actually, none of the first game's bosses is really hard. The hardest boss in the entire series, in my opinion, is also the last one introduced to it. The Kraken from Metal Slug 7 slash double X. This entry is kind of a compilation of what made the previous bosses difficult. You first have to fight its first phase, where the boss uses its 6 tentacles that you have to destroy one by one. Since the fight takes place on a volcano, the Kraken hides its limbs under the lava to surprise and hit you from below. You need to carefully jump on the scrap metals to avoid its attacks. The tentacles will toss scraps at you, try to smash you, rotate to destroy the platforms you're standing on, and throw plasma projectiles and boulders of magma with random trajectory. Once you beat all the tentacles, the real fun begins. The main body of the Kraken flies and starts attacking with everything it has, and it has a lot of enraging attacks. There is its giant shell that bounces once before it leaves you alone. It will drop a pack of magma balls that are a real pain to dodge. Deploys these spheres that take forever to destroy and will kill you if touched. Throws big cylinders to crush you and small ones that will follow you to the edge of the screen. Dive into the lava creating a wave of the burning liquid. Send sensor mines to destroy the platform you're on and emerge violently, taking with it whatever it was on its way. Oh and I forgot, since the boss is flying, you can't reach it with grenades. I can't think of a single feature that annoyed me in previous bosses that is absent when fighting the Kraken, and that's why it's my number one pick for the hardest boss in the Metal Slug series. That was my top 10 hardest bosses in Metal Slug. Which one of these hellish war machines made you pull your hair out of frustration or do you have your own nemesis? Share your answer with us in the comments. Special thanks to my generous patrons for their support. I hope you enjoyed this video. Give us a thumbs up if you did and why not consider subscribing to the channel. Thanks for watching.